I can show you some of the slides which were provided by Holmes um, on the PREVAIL trial. The PREVAIL trial is a randomized trial of left atrial appendage closure versus warfarin for stroke and thromboembolic prevention in patients with non-valvular atrial fibrillation named PREVAIL trial. And it was supposed to be sh shown on the American College of Cardiology last Saturday. And I was in the late breaking clinical trial waiting for this trial and suddenly 2,000 cardiologists were surprised that ACC uh, actually had withdrawn the presentation of the trial due, uh, due, due to a break in the embargo by Boston. So the question is really why? And uh, fortunately we have uh, s uh, slides um, on the trial <clears throat> and I want to share those slides with you. So what was the study purpose of this um, trial? It was a prospective randomized multicenter study to provide additional information on the safety and efficacy of the Watchman left atrial appendage closure technology. And it should be a confirmatory study conducted to provide additional information on implant procedure and complication rates associated with the device. So that was the main purpose. Um, are there any difference between protect and prevail in with respect to study design? Yes, there are some uh, differences. First of all, new implanters and unexperienced implanters were allowed. They were supposed to do two cases before they enrolled their first patients, but, uh, but they had very little experience, so even the third patient was in the study. And there was some differences with respect to exclusion of clopidogrel. There was no exclusion in the PROTECT AF trial, but there was exclusion in the PREVAIL trial. And the SHUTS score was slightly higher. <clears throat> they had three primary endpoints. And this is, um, I must draw your attention to this point because it's rather complicated to understand the study. One endpoint was basically the first primary was the safety endpoint. And the two other primary endpoints were supposed to be the so called efficacy endpoints. And if you look at the first primary endpoint, it's the acute up to seven day occurrence of death, ischemic stroke, systemic embolism, and procedure or device related complications requiring major cardiovascular or endovascular intervention. So the time point is up to seven days post-randomization. So the other primary endpoint was comparison of compositive, composite of stroke, meaning ischemic plus hemorrhagic stroke, systemic embolism, and cardiovascular unexplained death, time endpoint 18 months. And the third primary was a comparison of combined ischemic or systemic embolism occurring up over, um, beginning with seven days post randomization up to 18 months. So three primary endpoint. So this is the first primary endpoint. That is the so-called safety endpoint. And you can see <clears throat> that the number of subjects which are presented are 269. And you see that the event rate is 2.2%, which means six events occurred in the device group. And the success is based on the assumption that the upper confidence interval, which was the boundary was 2.67, was not met. So safety is OK with this device. Now we look at the secondary, uh, second primary endpoint. And the second primary endpoint is, I remind you, a comparison of composite of stroke, systemic embolism, and cardiovascular and unexplained death, time point, 18 months. And what you can see on this slide, that you have a couple of numbers which nobody understands unless you go in the study protocol and read the design of the study. So what does that mean, actually, those numbers? Those numbers mean that you have a 6.4% event rate per 100 patient years 
in each group, in the device group and in the control group, in prevail alone. This is the data on prevail alone. Okay? And if you look at this number, 1.07, this is the confidence interval. This is not calculated on the prevail data, but it's rather calculated on both the historical protect AF data plus the prevail data. So the 1.07 figure is the median point estimate of both protect AF and prevail, meaning that the device was associated with a 7% more events than warfarin. So it's a very important point. And they calculated a non-inferiority border of 1.75 for both trials together for non-inferiority, meaning that, you, that they allowed 75% worse than warfarin in the device group. But it was, the upper margin was 1.88. So it could have been 88% worse than warfarin. So they did not meet this second primary endpoint. So they did not show non-inferiority. Yeah. They, there is some claim that they only included 30 patients in the control group and 58 patients in the device group. Now we look at the third endpoint, which is um, also <coughs> a non-inferiority endpoint. I remind you, <coughs> these numbers, Again, 0.25 and 0.2 mean the event rate in the prevail trial. So that means 5%, 2.5%, sorry, this two is, uh, <coughs> is missing here on the, due to the BEMA, uh, event per 100 patient years in the device group and 2% in the control group. And the 0.0051 means that this is again the median point estimate for both the protect AF and the prevail. So the device was associated with 0.5% more ischemic, pure ischemic events than um, the um, control group. But this met non-inferiority. So you have three primary endpoints. We have data on safety which was met for non-inferiority. We have a primary endpoint, which was the combined endpoint on stroke, death, and, uh, and other complications, which was not met with a large boundary. And we have a third primary endpoint on pure ischemic events, which was actually met. Now we look at the vascular complications, and you can see that vascular complications were <coughs> in the range of the CAP trial, 4.4%. And if you look at pericardial fusions requiring intervention, you can see that it is 1.5%. So that's quite reassuring that the safety of the device has been shown and that you have a fairly low complication rate with respect to pericardial effusions. So the PREVAIL trial had a particular problem because of this low event rate in the control group. But looking at the number of the control group which was provided, it's only 30 patients. That means that there was potentially only one event in this group. So it's very difficult to draw any conclusions on that. So I had these slides, I had my impressions, and then I thought it's better to drink a cup of coffee and digest that thoroughly and make my conclusions, and now I want to share you my conclusions with you. And I think Prevail provides only very limited data because there's only one-fifth of patient group analyzed, total of 88 or 450. Primary endpoints are not clearly differentiated for efficacy and safety, and FDA will do that on data. So they will separate the second primary endpoint with respect to hemorrhagic and ischemic strokes. Secondary primary endpoint was negative due to, even with the wide confidence interval, and the boundary of the confidence interval was very high for a non-inferiority trial. In comparison, 
if you look at the non-inferiority trials with uh, the anti new oral anticoagulation uh, trials, then you have 1.3 on average. So that means 30%. However, we now have more meaningful safety data, and I think that's very important and reassuring on the safety of left aid appendage occlusion. And there's a further point which I find very important. When designing new studies, we need really to learn from this trial. Thank you.